Before we understand our approach to mobility, we have to understand what fascia is and kind of its structure. Um, so Thomas Myers, a physical therapist who coined this example of how fascia is similar to the structure of an orange. Um, so if you look here, you have these walled off sections of triangles within the orange. And within each individual triangle, you have thousands of orange fibers that are connected with each other by what would be our endomesium. And then those white walled off layers that make each triangle would represent our paramecium or the connective tissue that wraps around groups of muscle fibers which make muscle fascicles. And then you have this thick outer white rim layer here which would represent our epimesium, which surrounds groups of muscle fascicles. And then you have the thick connective tissue outer layer of the orange that would represent the deep fascial layer. And then all these layers merge together and form what would be analogous to our tendon, just like how the tip of this orange would attach to a tree and that's how it attaches. And that's how muscles attach to bone. So why is that important? So understanding that structure of fascia is important because is how all of our muscles are connected and how our body is able to move as one coordinated unit. So you've probably seen uh, things like these lacrosse balls in gyms or even foam rollers that people do before they work out or even after they work out. So what is this actually doing when you see people say addressing their IT band, which is a common area that's tight. You see people lying on their side, putting a ball or foam roller on the side, and then you see them rolling out. So what's that actually doing? So I've said it time and time again, the human body was made to adapt to whatever stressor is placed on it. So if you think of just a common example of a common muscle imbalance, so people sitting having that forward posture, hip flexor very tight, what happens is over time, your muscles will adapt to that. So when I'm sitting forward in this position, I'm putting increased stretch on my lat and my back structures are rounded forward and that muscle is elongating. What happens over time with that constant load and that constant stress on the muscle, the muscle is going to adapt by laying down more collagen, which makes it very dense. And what that density does, it forms what you probably know as muscle knots. And these little kinks, similar to something like this, is how it would look in the fascial layers that connect the muscles. So the reason that we're going to foam roll before we do any sort of static stretching or even a dynamic warm up is because if you think about this as your muscle, and if you're trying to stretch, first of all, a muscle that is already elongated, especially all your posterior chain muscles, your hamstrings, your glutes, and your back, they're already elongated. The problem is these dense tissues that are within the fascial layers. So we need to address that first, break up these adhesions with foam rolling to restore the gliding surfaces so that we're not stretching and just making that knot even worse and even tighter. So what's the take home point? We want to make sure we're doing those self myofascial release techniques or foam rolling using a lacrosse ball on all of our posterior chain muscles. But because they're already elongated, we don't want to be doing any static stretching before we're performing our workouts because the muscles are already lengthened. In contrast, with our front side muscles that have those adhesions like our hip flexors or our quads that become very tight and shortened, we first want to break up the adhesions with a foam roller or a lacrosse ball. And then from there, we can move on to static stretching, which we'll talk a little bit more about in part two.